everybody. I'm ready to hike again. I've got my hat in case it's sunny. I've got my backpack. I've got my faithful companion, Bree. I wonder, what's the tallest thing you've ever climbed? Today, we learn some of Jesus' most important teaching. Jesus had been spending a lot of time healing people. In addition to their physical hurts and pains, Jesus saw people also had broken hearts and unsteady hope. After healing so many people, Jesus decided to care for them in another way. So he led the people who had been following him to a mountain. Mountains had special meaning in Jesus' time. People believed mountains were holy places to connect with God, maybe because they reached up high in the sky. Can you reach your arms up high in the sky? Reach up. Jesus knew mountains reminded people of God's presence with them, so he chose a mountain as a good place to give an important sermon. A sermon is a talk meant to teach and help people grow in their relationship with God, kind of like what pastors Ben and Katie do each Sunday. But Jesus was the best at giving sermons. He told funny stories and taught important things. People were so committed to Jesus that they climbed all the way up the mountain to listen. There are many ways to move up a mountain. Can you, can you work, hike with me? Some like to hike. And some like to pull with a rope. Oh, and some use a rolling wheelchair for their hiking. And they push. They push. And some people climb with their arms and their legs and they pull themselves up. So let's climb this mountain together. You pick which way you'd like to move up the mountain. So are you ready? Let's go. Come climb up the mountain. Come on, Bree. Come on, everybody. Climb with me. Come on, you can do it. Woo! We made it. Phew. We made it. Let's find a seat and settle our bodies after that big climb. In this Sermon on the Mountain, one of Jesus' first recorded sermons, Jesus lists nine ways people are blessed. To be blessed meant to be happy or satisfied. People often thought being happy or content was the result of their situation or how life was going for them. But as we know, Jesus likes to turn what we think we know upside down and show us a new way. Jesus told the people that the ones who were poor and hungry and sad and humble were the ones who were blessed. The people listening to Jesus were amazed. Some were confused, some were surprised, and some were relieved. Did he really mean that people who were mourning and very sad were blessed? Meek, gentle people were the ones that had power? This was the opposite of what their culture said. Their culture told them that power and possessions were what made a person happy or blessed. Each blessing, or beatitude as we call them, had two parts. First, Jesus made a statement, and then he gave a promise. For example, Jesus made a statement, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Then Jesus gave the promise, For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In each of these verses, Jesus names a group of people we wouldn't usually think of as happy or content, then offers them a promise for healing and hope right now, not just in the future. This way, Jesus promises these blessings is his way of bringing God's kingdom to us here and now. Just like last week, you should have a coloring page and an activity to do. But first, I would like to bless you. A blessing is something you receive, so open your hands like you're ready to receive a gift. I'll speak a blessing. If you receive that blessing, take it and put it in your heart. Okay, hands up, ready? You are blessed because you followed the way of Jesus all the way up the mountain. When we follow Jesus, we are blessed with good wisdom.